Hey everyone, I'm at Oak Cemetery. I have a quick story for you. Um, I'm gonna read stones on the way, but it's about a pet potato farmer that was shot and killed over his potato crop back in 1912. But we'll stop and look at some stones on the way. So this is Reverend James Grubbs, 1861 to 19, maybe 16. And I guess it would be his wife, Julia, 1864 to 1933. And has a Bible up on top. I love that. That is, I love it. It's a pretty neat old stone. Oh, look at these. They're hearts. Let's see what these are on our way. Okay. Richard L., son of L. and M. Casey, 1920 to 1938. And then this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mildred, son of Ellen Elm Casey, 1913 to 1916. So he's three. But I guess these two were brothers, Richard. Now, that says Mildred, right? M I L. I think it's. No, it's a U. Millard? Millard. They are brothers. Yes, these were brothers. Okay. Oh, let's look at this. Let's look at this first. Let's go see what this is. I like these. And this one looks really old. Okay, we're going to get over here to C.A. Langley. Mother Eliza B. Andrews, 1849 to 1938. That's old. That is old. Okay, I'm supposed to be on my way. Let's walk this way. We'll get over there. We'll get over there and I'll tell you the story about the potato farmer that was shot and killed over his potato crop. Now this, not sure what's going on here. J.F. Pearson. Did that tree grow up right in the middle? Because this looks like a plot, a family plot. I don't see any stones, but did that tree grow up in right in the middle of the family plot? Let's see. What is this? Okay, I don't... I guess there's graves in there. There's not any stones. Barren. It says barren. So there's not any stones there, and there's not any stones in this one. So maybe, well, here's three in a row. So maybe they don't, uh, I'm not, not for sure about that. Okay, N E Fry. All right, no stones in there. Not sure. This is old. Oh, it looks old. Mamie S. Petty, sweet woman, wife, friend, and mother. How sweet. I don't see any dates anywhere on that. Jones, Florence Eliz Elizabeth, wife of B.W. Jones, born in 1879, died in 1909. Make her about 30 years old, about 30, I think. Okay, well, we're going to make our way down here, and I'm going to tell you our story want to tell it early so you can, the ones that don't want to just look at stones can stop watching. Okay, so my story today is about C.A. Langley, and this is his stone. Born 1842, died in 1912. 
and his stone has a Bible up on top. Those are neat. I like those. And I guess this is probably his wife next to him. Armanda, 1848 to 1949. But the story about the Langleys. Mr. Langley, C.A. Langley, sold his farm in Barling to Joseph Wilhelm. Joseph only paid part payment due on the farm and wanted to pay the other part out. And in return for Mr. Langley allowing Joseph to pay out the, the balance on the farm, he, Joseph was going to allow Mr. Langley to continue um, using the potato patch to um, go ahead and uh, garden and bring in his potatoes while Joseph was paying off the remainder of his balance on the farm. Anyway, Joseph had told a neighbor that Langley wasn't going to get those potatoes and that he was too afraid, he was too afraid to come get his taters, were his words. Too afraid to come and get his taters. Well, Langley, C.A. Langley, is almost 70 years old. Joseph is 35. So, C.A. Langley decides he's going to go get his, what's, what's his? It's, it belongs to him. It was in the agreement on uh, the selling of the farm. So he goes, he's going to go get them. His friends are telling him, watch out for that Joseph Wilhelm. He's, he's a bad character. Watch out for him. Be careful with him. And the day that he went to get his potatoes, to plow up his potato field, he took a, took a couple of friends with him. And his wife told him, be, be careful when you go. And Joseph had been spreading around that C.A. Langley which had a very reputable uh, reputation. He was very, he just, he was known as a, a good person, honest person around Barling, around Fort Smith. Everybody admired him. Wilhelm, Joseph Wilhelm, had just moved from Charleston to Barling when he bought the farm. And he kind of has um, not so good of a reputation. On the day of the, the murder, C.A. Langley goes and takes a couple of friends to plow up the potato field and to harvest his potatoes. That are due him. They're, they're due him. When Joseph Wilhelm shoots him in the face, well, his friends run to try to help him, and when they do, Joseph threatens them to stay back, leave him alone. He walks over, he shoots him and shoots him a second time, blows the man's head off. They had been accusing, Joseph and his wife had been accusing C. C. A. Langley of assaulting his wife. I don't know what kind of an assault, but that wasn't his his character. Come to find out, after they're arrested, they had also tried to blackmail someone over property in Charleston. They didn't shoot the other person, but they tried to blackmail them and in, in the same, something in the same manner, something um, that included his wife. Because when Joseph Wilhelm is arrested, they also arrest his wife as an accomplice. So they had made up this story that C.A. Langley had assaulted her in some way. I don't know if it's verbally or what. And <clears throat> Langley believed 
that it was a blackmail scheme because he didn't want to pay for his, the rest of the property. He didn't want to pay the balance due. And come to find out, that, that's what it was. They had already pulled this same type of scheme back in Charleston before they moved to Barling. But this time it went a little too far. And C.A. Langley ended up dead. And so that is my story of the potato farmer in 1912 that was killed over his potato farm, over a potato patch. And we'll just go and look at some stones along the way. Look at some more stones. There's another one with hearts. There's three hearts across here. Let's see. Lewis C. Johnson, October 6, 1901, March 25th, 1921. He didn't live very long. He's a teenager. I'll show you some stones. We've told the story for you that, that want to get off of here and you just want to listen to the story. And for the ones that want to look at some stones, I'll walk around and show you a few stones. We looked at this when we first got here. Let's see what this is. Sarah J., 1852 to 1925. It's Cromwell and Samuel Cromwell, Cromwell 1836 to 1913. Don't you just wonder how these people lived back, you know, in the 1800s? I just I think I'm drawn to this because I just, I read these stones and, and my mind is just like, who was this person? This doesn't have anything readable on it. Oh, there we go. Looky there. Sylvester Hunter, born August 30th, 18. 80, died January 15th, 1906. Let's look at this one. James Green. <clears throat> Son of Frank Green, born 1874, died 1905. Let's see what this is propped up here. Hmm. Liddy. Maybe it's Liddy T. Oliver. Died in 1908. His 80. 88 years old, it looks like. Right in 1908. Let's go back over across this little road here. Look at some of these old ones. See if we can make this out. I can't make out the name, but born in 1906 and died 1906. Okay, it looks like this baby lived about a week, I think. I don't think I can make this one out. Can't make it out at all. I can make out. These are small. All of these are really small stones. I don't think I can make it out, but you can kind of almost see it better on the video, I think. So maybe we can read it from the video.
John Cabbery, born, um, it doesn't say, it says died February 8th, 1906, age about 55 years. It doesn't say his birth. So that I guess that's why it says about 55 years. I don't think I'm going to be able to read that one. Let's see. Don't think so. Bertha Quinn Pryor, 1883 to 1909. Look over here. I see one that looks really pretty and unique. I'm going to walk over here just a ways and see if we can find out what the names are. So I have about, I probably have another, I mean, this is, I think this is nine or 10, my ninth or 10th video. I have a good 50 more stories to tell you. Try to do a couple of week, couple, two or three a week. This is neat. Let's look at stop and look at this. This isn't the one I was going at for though. Frank Reed, 1866 to 1906. Looks like a gate. I guess maybe it's supposed to be a gate, the gate to heaven, maybe. Okay, let's go over here and look at this angel. This is beautiful. Luck and bow. Luck and ball. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. Let's see if I can find you any unique ones or any that just stand out to me. You got all these broken ones here on the ground that have fallen. This is pretty. David. David Dinsmore, 1955 to 1993, possibly. This one's neat. And there's a smaller one propped up against it. Let's see, what is the name on that? Winstel, W-I-N-S-T-E-L, and Kilmer, Kilmer, tiny little one, Kilmer, tiny little stone there, not very big at all. Oh, how cute. That is so cute. But that's not very old, and I don't want to um, bring pain to a family that's still living. Mother Eleanor James, October 31st, 1821 to February 25th, 1901. Oh, one gone, but not forgotten. <coughs> okay, I guess that is all I have for you today. Just wanted to share a few and tell that short little story for you. And 
I'll get back with you in a few days. Thanks for watching.